Yeah, today, um, uh, my name is Joe. I'm a thermal engineer from Meta, and uh, I'm speaking with my collaborator, Jalen Chen from WeWin. Um, today, our topic is about two phase immersion cooling study for OCP accelerated module, or OAM. Um, so, first, uh, I will give a brief introduction about the presentation outline. Um, we will first talk about our motivation and goal for this study, and the second, um, for the test setup. We will talk about the boiling plate and TTV design, performance results, and share some uh, views from the, about the fluid. And finally, we will summarize the whole study. So as you may already heard a lot in this OCP summit, like the growing power density of the AI and the machine learning system in the data centers are the driven factor for a lot of innovative uh, cooling solutions. I think it's the same to us. So we found that a two-phase immersion cooling has also the potential to enable better thermal performance that, uh, that single-phase immersion that uh, can, cannot provide. So uh, the, the reason is that like, uh, the two-phase Im uh, immersion can also direct to chip, uh, do the direct to chip contact, and also it allows the phase change or evaporation and condensation, which allows a higher heat transfer uh, coefficient. Um, so this study is mainly as uh, also a part of our meta team's uh, overall study for the immersion cooling. As uh, before the launch, my colleague uh, Jiadi and Chen has talked about the overall view from meta team on the immersion cooling study. And for this study, we mainly focus on using OCP accelerator module OAM as the cooling target um, so that we can explore what's the thermal limit of the two-phase immersion, uh, two immersion cooling. So the goal of this study, we want to explore the limit of the thermal performance of two-phase immersion represent, uh, using a representative setup and also practice the boiling uh, plate design to achieve the low thermal resistance as low as possible. And then we want, we want to put that, uh, pl uh, the plate into the tank to do the some tank, tank level test, including check the power effect, preheating effect, some tank depth effect, and also check the overall tank performance uh, power consumption. And finally, we will also evaluate uh, different uh, two-phase Im uh, immersion fluids as uh, app using some apple-to-apple -apple comparison data. So next, I will pass over to my collaborator, Jalen, to talk about the test setup and some results. Okay, uh, thank you, Drew, for the introduction. Uh, I'm Jalen from Webin Thermal Team, and uh, I'm going to uh, present the uh, result of our study with you. But before uh, sharing the, uh, our result, I would like to brief you on the, our overall test stop. Uh, in our test, uh, we have a liquid to liquid CDU to provide the cooling water into the immersion cooling tanks uh, condensers. And uh, with the liquid to liquid CDU and the facility water, the tank's cooling capability could be higher than the 8 kilowatt, which could fulfill our uh, test requirement. And okay, let's move on to the intake setup. Uh, the tank's internal space uh, can uh, accommodate the 4OU systems, but uh, our TTV tray is only 1OU, so we have some filter to reduce the fuel usage in the tank. And for the TTV tray, uh, we have the uh, UVB dummy board and the APIS uh, OAM TTV. The UVB dummy board and the OAM TTV follow the uh, UVB 1.0 and the OAM 1.0 spec. And uh, the maximum power of each TTV could be up to the one kilowatt. Okay, so to meet the foreseeable uh, high power chip cooling demand, we have the one kilowatt boiling plate uh, reference design. The reference design has the high thermal conductivity best to, for the better uh, heat spreading, and have the boiling enhancement coating on the surface to have the better let the uh, bubble escape the surface. And uh, in this test, the uh, OMTTV have the compact uh, for your heater uh, with the integrated heat spreader, and uh, it also has a spatial engineering ceiling to make it better fit for the immersion cooling test. Okay, so uh, in this page, we would like to share some key design factor of the one kilowatt boiling pad. Uh, we focus on two factors, the base design and also the BEC de design. We have uh, tested multiple samples to, uh, for the uh, thermal performance comparison and also to optimize uh, our design. So here we share some design feature of the uh, four samples. 
Okay, uh, as, as list tables, uh, list, list our uh, design feature of those four samples. We have two types, based de design, uh, uh, vapor chamber type, and the copper based type. And for the BEC type, we have the, also have two types. The 3D BEC, uh, which is using the pink fin design, and the 2D BEC, which is using the center layer design. So uh, in our test result here, uh, we could see uh, the sample with the vapor chamber de de design, the thermal performance could be improved as the power increases from the uh, 300 watt to the one kilowatt, uh, which means the high thermal conductive base could have the uh, chance to extend the cooling limitation. And regarding the BEC design, we also found the 3D BEC could have the benefit on the thermal performance. So in the following uh, trail level test, in order to test uh, uh, and the evaluation under the high power level, so we choose the sample A and the sample C, uh, which are using the uh, vapor chamber based design. Uh, oh, this page, is, uh, we would like to share some uh, video of our actual test uh, from the 300 watt to the one kilowatt. So we could see uh, the boiling behavior under the different uh, power level. Yeah, sorry, apologize, apologize for that, but let's, uh, with, uh, yeah, maybe we need a, also better cooling for this laptop too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, okay, let me share uh, some uh, test results at the trial level. Uh, we are performing some uh, thermal tester under variation condition to see uh, if there are any impact from the preheating or the uh, depth. Okay, so uh, in this picture, uh, we could see uh, our test result. The, the solid line representing the uh, thermal performance at the first row and the, the uh, the dash line representing the thermal performance at the second row. So in, the, in this test result, we could see there's no significant impact uh, from the uh, preheat. But uh, we found that uh, there's a slight uh, thermal performance impact by the depths. So uh, in this result, the solid line representing the thermal performance under the normal lo location and the dash line representing the thermal performance under the deeper location. So we could see the deeper location uh, have the uh, worse thermal performance than the uh, normal location. So it could be a reference for the tank and the, the two-phase immersion cooling server design. So uh, for the rem uh, in following page, uh, Joe will share the remaining result and uh, the summary with you. So let me return the remaining time to Joe. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so besides uh, le uh, tank level testing, we also care about the whole system power consumption. And it's not surprising to us that the energy efficiency of the two-phase immersion is great. Um, so I think there has been multiple study and also some has been published in the OCP is that the two-phase immersion cooling is very efficient, can 
achieve as low as 0.02 uh, PUE on a tank level. So we made some brief com comparison. If we assume a typical data center with a PUE of 1.3, and a typical meta data center can achieve as low as 0.109 uh, PUE, and with uh, two-phase immersion enabled, then that can achieve as low as 1.02. So for, for example, for a system with uh, eight by one kilowatts TTVs, we need at only less than 150 watts to, for the pumping power. That's extremely low compared to some other thermal solutions. So, and also for a larger tank or higher density uh, tank, we don't expect the pumping power to be uh, grow too much when the IT power grows. And, as, and we also have some data to back that up too. So, one big question I think has been talked uh, yesterday and also in this early, early this morning session is about the truth of the fluids. We made some apple-to-apple um, -apple comparison. We bas basically replaced the fluid in the tank to do uh, the different fluids comparison. So three fluids has been tested. Uh, they are um, Optian SF33 and Optian 2P50 and FMD50. So they have different boiling point and different uh, other thermal physical properties. Uh, Optian 2P50 shows the lowest thermal resistance among the three fluids, and uh, all of them has shown no compatibility issue with our TTV setup. Um, so, however, like we we've seen uh, a lot of training in the industry, and uh, if I can make a wish list about what I want for the two-phase immersion fluid, we can make a list. All uh, the, the all the desired feature has been put it here. So we definitely want to have low dielectric constant and chemical compatibility with all components in the IT system, and also a non flammable non-toxic, zero ODP, and a low GWP. Those are all the, all the wanted features, and also most importantly for us as a customer is reasonable cost. However, uh, as most of us know, like PFAS regulation has put more uncertainties on available two-phase immersion fluid. Uh, definitely, we there are more work needs to be done to understand the compatibility between the fluid and IT components, which has been emphasized in a lot of sessions in this track. And I believe there will be a PFAS panel talk later this afternoon with a lot of experts uh, in, in this community to talk about the PFAS regulation. So to summarize, uh, our study in a system level performance view, we showed that uh, two-phase immersion cooling technology has superb thermal performance without doubt. And it can enable very good energy efficiency, which leads to uh, extremely low PUE for data centers. It can also enable very high rack uh, power density and simplify the IT tank design a lot. We don't need to deal with uh, the hoses and other complex systems for other uh, thermal te technologies. And from the boiling plate design, we practiced the boiling plate design. We actually did a lot of iterations. We were able to achieve a very low thermal distance, as low as 0 0.02 uh, degrees C per watts. And from the fluid's point of view, uh, fluid availability is the key to drive the two-phase immersion fluid forward. And also, we want to continue to monitor the PFAS regulation landscape so that we can understand better how we can get a better uh, fluid is both like high performance and also environmental friendly to our society. So finally, I, I do want to acknowledge our collaborator. I uh, want to acknowledge Cooler Master and uh, KMOS for their great support throughout this study. Um, lastly, call to action. Uh, we. We want to navigate through this uncertainties of two-phase uh, fluid choice regulation, including the supply chain availability cost sector, and definitely more uh, chemical compatibility study to ensure the long-term reliability of IT gear in the immersion cooling area overall. And uh, we want to build a strong um, system through this community for immersion cooling by knowledge sharing. And the late, uh, last but not least, uh, just uh, join the OCP Cooling Environmental Society so that we can share uh, more knowledge and learn together to uh, enable the immersion cooling in the future. Yeah, thank you.